welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm Jack, and today I'm here with guest and product designer Alex. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our new Adobe Live channel on YouTube to stay up to date on the latest streams, participate in the community. You can ask us questions live, let us know what your favorite movie is. We started the day off with a new set of Photoshop creative challenges hosted by Lulu Val every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. You can also challenge yourself with a new prompt every day. Today, Alex is going to be going over a really important topic that I think extends beyond UI and UX. It is just great for all creatives. So why don't you tell us a little more about yourself, Alex, and what you're going to be working on today? Thank you. Uh, well, first, everyone, thank you for having me on Adobe Live. It was great to be back. Um, I am Alejandro, but all my friends call me Alex. So I want to consider everybody here today a friend. So what we Go by either way, Alejandro or Alex. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm a product designer, make a UX designer. And I've been a UX designer for about the last three or so years. Um, and before becoming a UX designer, I know this industry had to have a bit of an eclectic career. I was as a geology uh, major uh, sitting at UC Santa Cruz. Um, but Today, what we'll be doing is, yeah, so, sorry, um, Alejandro, uh, intro slide. And um, I was, I went to UC Santa Cruz for geology. And I know you had a pretty eclectic career as well, didn't you, Jack? Yeah, we both kind of have a, a background, I guess, in science. I actually got my uh, degree in medical illustration. So a little, I took science and art classes, so. <laughs> that is so cool. And that's what I love about this industry is how it brings a lot of these, uh, different backgrounds in, in, into this. Uh, but yeah, so today, um, you know, well, actually one thing is I like going to the movies a lot when I'm not working. Uh, it's a nice way for me to relax. But this kind of brings into what we're going to be doing today is a case study. Ta-da! Uh, I'm going to be doing a case study on a movie tracking app. Uh, I really want to highlight what happens after your done with the project and what are you supposed to do after you're done with it you're just gonna leave it in a folder on your documents or show it off and you know try to get people's eyes on it so that's what we will be doing today um so for quick summary the last time i was here i did this app um and you don't have to go back and check it out you don't have to do any homework or anything like that a uh, very quick summary we did a research we did a mind map we did an IA, we did a wireframe, both lo-fi and hi-fi. And what you see here is kind of what we got. I did some tweaking a little bit afterwards just to kind of spruce it up. But we're going to be taking this and we're going to be creating a case study based off of that. Okay. And what did we do today? Yeah, we're going to be doing a lo-fi and a hi-fi wireframe. And Godzilla on the right side because you always want Godzilla, you know, oh, Rooting for us. Definitely. Okay. Let's see. Awesome. I love that you put brand. together your uh, presentation in XD as well. So cool. Yeah, you know, might as well, you know, keep it all in the family. Uh, leave it in, leave it in XD. Yeah, let's dive in uh, to, uh, you know, what you're going to be working on. All right, let's do it. So I started off with a sketch. Um, this is not the prettiest sketch. And no, I it's great. Of, thank you. You know, I really <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, coming from a medical illustrator, I really appreciate that. Because uh, I'm definitely not a, 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 a drawer. But it's good this, to see. It, I mean, talking about case studies, right? I think some people have this tendency to go back and like, oh, I'm going to make my sketch pretty before I post it. But like, this is, I mean, this is real, right? This is what it really looks like, right? You Straight know, from the sketchbook. <laughs> Exactly. I was thinking about doing that exact scene and making it look pretty. But at the same time, it's one of those things where you kind of get this false sense of what design can sometimes be. And design is messy. It's yeah. iterative process. It is scratching out a little portion where you're like, no, nah, that's that's probably not a good idea. Or maybe I should move this around and scribbles on the left, left side. And it turns out that I didn't have enough room. So I have to move everything over to the right. Definitely. And all the little like text notes that you write for yourself. I'm a big like, people are surprised like, oh, that's, there's so much like text in your notes. It's not just, you know, 
uh, sketches, you know, beautiful drawings. There's a lot of like, a lot of my processes just like taking notes. All the time. I have, I have entire things of these field notes, just filled with notes like i'm in the middle of meetings and i'm just like writing everything down because if i type them out i'm just gonna forget yeah. and i do quick little sketches inside of them so but for this particular thing uh or this particular case study um i always like to ask myself a couple questions before going into it and some of those questions are things like uh who is the audience right uh, who are we presenting this for? And a lot of times it's for recruiters and design managers uh, or hiring managers. A lot of these people don't have a ton of time to look at every aspect of the case study. And especially if you have, if you explain everything, it's great, but you also have to make it approachable for someone who's going to be skimming it. And like, okay, I'm going to quickly see what they have. Should I look more into it? You know? And another thing is like, I like to treat my case studies like they're an actual project as well. So why, why look at, how do I should, how should I set it up for these kind of people uh, who are going to be taking a look at it? So this is our, when I sketch, you can see the bleed throughs, uh, but this is, this is it. So let's start moving things over. Let's bring out an artboard. What do you find the most challenging part of creating a case study, Jack? That's a good question. Um, I think I think it's the the hardest part is um, probably just just starting it. <laughs> Honestly, you know, it's usually like right after you've wrapped a project and you're like, you just want to kind of, ugh, I just want to like move on with my life. But you know, um, if you don't, you know, put your work out there, then there's no way that people are ever going to see it. So you kind of have to like bite the bullet a little bit and uh, spend some time. You know, that was, that's another thing is like, when you're working on this, Alex, do you have like, keep a mental like a list in your head or mentally note, like, I want to make sure to include this, you know, in a case study. So I'm going to set it aside. Like, are you kind of always, as you're working through this, keeping these kind of like pieces and parts that you're going to eventually want to use or that's something you kind of do more towards the end. Um, I, I do that mostly towards the end. I guess I get so focused on the actual product sometimes, like a little bit of a tunnel vision that I sometimes forget that. Uh, so, yeah, I, I normally do like a, a look back at things. I'm like, okay, yeah, what should I bring in, or what should I clean up a little bit more? And that's a, that's a good question too. Is when you're finished the project, do you ever go back and clean it up? And do you state that in the project on the right. uh, case study? Like, hey, I did go back and do this. Yeah, do that. right. That's a good point. Um, I tend to be a little bit, I, I tend to be probably more share the raw materials rather than clean things up. Although, you know, sometimes you might have I think the part where you might want to do, I would probably do something like that is when I have a, a product that's launched and there might have been some things that changed between like design handoff and, you know, build that I want to go and like make sure that those elements are aligned so that when we present like the, the case study that the, you know, the screens that we show in design and maybe the final, um, shots of the app kind of like line up or the app or the website you know what i mean yeah yeah absolutely there's a lot of times when you launch something it's like okay this is how we're going to launch it on this date mm -hmm. but then we're going to follow up with these quick minute changes to mm -hmm. help with something and yeah i mean it's hard to figure out that fine line like do you do it or do you just like state like hey these changes happened but this was on this date um, yeah, I mean, I would probably, I can't think of an, I'm trying to think of an example where like something has changed and then I had to make an update to um, a case study and like specify. I'll normally just do like an add-on, like I'll just add on to the project with kind of like the new feature that was implemented. I mean, I've, I've done that before, um, if that makes sense. Oh, totally, totally. 
point makes sense. Okay, let's see. So what I'm doing is trying to just build that header up here. So I'm working on this guy. And so you're setting up, you're using the grid in XD? I am, I am. I, I like using grids a lot because it kind of helps me think about breakpoints too. So here I have this at 1920. Mm -hmm. Uh, but not everybody has a 1920 screen. Sometimes it's smaller. Sometimes people might be doing it on the web. Having breakpoints kind of gets me into that mindset of what happens if you decide to, if someone has a, I don't know, 10 by 24 screen, how is that supposed to get rearranged? So when considering this, like, okay, so this is going to be like this, this would be a five column. So if it goes into 1024, it could just, there could be maybe only, what, this is 12, eight or 10. So how is that supposed to shrink into that area? Um, yeah, how, how many breakpoints do you tend to work in? Like, do you do five, do you do four? I will use it. Extremes? Yeah, so in terms of like putting together a project in XD, I'll usually present just like a single desktop and a single mobile to the client, but while I'm working, there's always in the back of my mind, like I'll be annotating, like, okay, this is how this is going to behave on a larger screen. Or like, you know, this is how it's going to behave, uh, you know, on a tablet. I'm always trying to think like, you know, if you have like a full width uh, hero or header, how does that behave on a full, like an HD monitor, like, you know, enormous ultra huge monitor. Obviously, you, you know, it, it looks a little bit weird, like having something full screen on something that large. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't always like design for every visually design for every scenario um, in my designs, but I always like know what's going to happen at those sizes and like make sure that that's kind of like clearly communicated to the developer. It's impossible to do every single size. You have to like roll right, the dice like and try to. <laughs> oh, it's like okay, we're gonna. This is how it's gonna be for these extremes. Right, right, Can and we... like. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay, cool. So it looks like the header's done and we got some text. I don't actually text, but it's going to be good for now. Otherwise, we're just going to be going over a copy. And I don't know. I'm never great with copy. I spend too much time on it. And I'm like, is this, does this sound right? Uh, I don't think anybody wants that right now. So let's, let's just move on. <laughs> How do you feel about using real copy or lorem ipsum? Do you have an opinion when it comes to like, you know, does, um, do you like designing with real copy or do you, what's your thoughts on that? That's a good question. I prefer real copy. Right. Um, just because it, oh, I definitely do want that. Just because it makes it easier to understand how it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to fill in. Yeah. I always try to do a rough estimation of the copy itself. Um, let's not do monster magic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You can get into a little bit of a a pickle, I guess, if you use lorem ipsum and then you have copy that's, you know, doesn't quite match up and you haven't designed for, you know, more or less copy to go into a space, so. Right, exactly. And things like if you're not using real copy, you'll also run into things like globalization issues. If you're going to end up yeah. translating this out to other places or line breaks and like how are line breaks supposed to happen. So um, for contacts, if you were to working for a company that is on a more global scale, definitely, uh, you would have to see how would this translate into a type that's a bit longer, right? Or just uh, like date formatting is different and like how do you handle that <laughs> exact date format oh, that's a big one uh yeah. exactly so what happens if that text that you had ends up being 1.5 times longer than what you initially had and you didn't account for how it's supposed to break into two lines or multiple lines or on a smaller break point uh so that's why i have a tendency of wanting to do real text even though my text is probably not the best fit for it. It just makes things a little bit easier down the line. And I'm all about making things easier for myself if possible, because it's always going to be something else to do. Mm -hmm. 
for sure. We got yes. lots of people in the chat saying they're excited for this one. Becca is currently working on a case study for a save the date they design. So uh, Josh is has been using has been doing all of their presentations in XD, which is cool. That is neat. Yeah, what's you know this is this is a movie app. We haven't talked about many movies yet. I want to know what's everyone's favorite latest movie. Or just like a movie they saw. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess latest, maybe not latest, but with something that they've seen recently that they've really been excited about. Is one of your favorite movies still Paddington 2? Okay, I <laughs> I will die on this now for Paddington 2. Paddington 2 is an amazing movie, only followed by Paddington 1. <laughs> if you have not seen Paddington, I implore you, chat. And Jack, just go check it out. You're not the only person who has said this. So I have not seen Paddington Bear, so I'm gonna have to go and watch both of those movies. I feel, I feel it. <laughs> and you know, every time someone says that, they turn into a believer. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. All right. One thing I really enjoy doing is adding a bit of a summary, a quick TLDR of what this is. So it's normally going to be. Uh, the issue of the problem, the, what else is it? This would be the issue, the problem, the hypothesis and the solution that I came up with and the outcome or the solution outcome. So try to keep it on three to four sentences just so that someone could see it, quickly read it. I said, okay, I got an idea of what this is. And sometimes I get a little bit lengthy with my wireframes or my case studies, as you can see. <laughs> um, it's a lot. And if someone wants to come in and take a look at everything and be more mindful what to look for, I have a bit of a table of contents uh, that respond to quick links to the different anchor points on where those sections are. So here, maybe this will be a wireframe, or maybe this is going to be um, the final output or the design system or accessibility, something like that. So they'll have an idea of like, okay, these are the hit the points. These are the things I am hitting on these particular items within the chat, uh, within the case study, sorry. Gotcha. Yeah, those are great. Those are would be anchor links. So when you click on them, it would just kind of take you down to that section of the case study. If you wanted to quickly hit on some specific thing, you know, somebody is coming to your project or your case study and they want to see like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm interested in making my um, site, you know, WCAG 2 compliant, AA compliant, you know, what, what can, what have you done regarding accessibility on this project, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm just trying to make it easy for my audience, right? Bodies don't have a lot of time. Computers and designers don't have a ton of time to look at everything. I'm adding a little image here. Because I'm noticing I have this, I have this, and then two blocks of text, and then another block of text. But I want to break it up a little bit with an image. So that way I help represent what this is. And what I'm going to do here is the problem statement. So for this particular case, the problem statement was I want to be able to track all the movies I need to watch. Uh, what need to watch and want to watch things that people keep telling to go check out, like Paddington or <laughs> Citizen Kane or I, I don't know. Uh, Extremes there. Pretty extreme difference between those two. <laughs> no, you think so. They're not. Paddington 2 is totally on the level of Citizen Kane. Come on, chat. Back me up. Has anyone seen this? Because I feel a little alone here. Bliss okay. says uh, Hawk's favorite is also Paddington. Uh, Andrew Hawkwright is another uh, host here on Adobe Live, so you are not taste. alone. <laughs> scenario, okay, cool. So scenario, um, and so yeah. So what's the scenario? What what, what led to this for me? Um, really, it was being on Adobe Live and sharing and creating an app with everybody. So I want to highlight that because this is going to be part of what I set up as the constraints, what it is, what what led to this? How long did I have, right? Yeah, that's an don't important have one. Uh, yeah, it's, there's never enough time for a project. No. Uh, I think it's like the running joke uh, of it all is that, well, if I had more time, it's like, it's always that, uh, it's, it's always learning how to effectively use that time as much as possible. And that really shows 
live. And in the particular case, you know, we were on Adobe Live, we were doing this. Uh, so let's, I might add in those last slides to kind of show what we were doing. Good context. What's a favorite movie of yours, Jack? Oh, that's a good question. I'm a big uh, sci-fi fan. Um, oh, really? Yep. So growing up, you know, Star Wars is my jam. Although I'm a bit of a Star Trek fan as well. Um, favorite movie, though, I don't. I would really have to think about that. Another one of my favorites is The Neverending Story. Um, classic. That is classic. Do yeah. Have, <laughs> do you have a favorite? Um, do you have a favorite Star Wars? Like, do you like the new um, shows? The Empire Strikes Back is my favorite Star Wars movie. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite. Yeah, I think that's a lot of people's favorites. It's just favorite. good. Yeah. Um, I don't, I have not, I'm not up to date on all of the uh, shows, the Star Wars, various Star Wars shows out there. So, um, as a Star Wars fan, I'm, a f I do like them. I think I'm a preference for The Mandalorian. Yeah. So, yeah if you get a chance, recommend it. Also, just Grumpy is really cute. So, I am making. A button. I wonder why this is not. Okay, it's fine. Buttons. So I'm planning on this to be a carousel. And initially, while I was planning on doing it, you can see from my little scratch out here, I moved it up. I was going to do this. And not like this is totally okay. You could do this, and that's totally fine. But one thing I know is when it comes to accessibility, it's not always the best way to go about it. Um, and the only reason why is because we'll, when someone's using a screen reader and they're going through these things, they'll hit scenario as the title and like, okay, what this is. And then they'll hit carousel. They'll see this is a carousel and then they'll have these little buttons on the left side. So read left, next, carousel, 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 next. Really depends on how you might set it up. I found it might be easier for us to just go ahead and put this to the top left and right and add little things that state how many slides or carousel items there's going to be. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, do you uh, think about the reading order as well when you're setting up your character styles? Uh, I do. I do. Um, I think it's just a habit I got into working with people who are very detail oriented with the accessibility stuff. And, you know, depending on where you work, it's not always a case that you need to do this, but when it becomes bigger companies are public and I'm not just doing that, there it is. It kind of becomes a necessity after your point. Um, so yeah, when it comes to reading order, I always think about, okay, this is going to be H2. When they look through it, because that's what they're going to be skimming through and then going into it's like, okay, They'll read one out of five, so they'll know there are five different options. Left chevron, right chevron, and then they get to see everything else moving into the text. How about you? Do you do that? Yeah, so we, uh, where I work, we do um, a lot of projects for like government and healthcare. So we always have to kind of keep accessibility in mind. Um, but yeah, what you just kind of said there about how the character styles kind of determine the reading order. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that it's important um, when you're building out your site to make sure that you've got that kind of, you're thinking about that when you're laying it out, like, okay, not only like what the what the text looks like on the page, but how is this actually gonna read hierarchical in the like tags that you set up? Yeah, and it's always, it's always nice for engineers if you set up those tags ahead of time, like, hey, engineers, this is going to be H2, this is how it's going to move into these items then. And, or what gets read out too. Like images, yeah. another big thing is setting up what is supposed to be displayed when, uh, what, well, not displayed, but what's supposed to be set, what's the alt text of these things. Um, so we'll get into that when we get to more of the hi-fi because we'll be adding in the actual images. But it's always good to be able to say, hey, this is going to be an image of 
talking about the case study, right? And this is going to say this, these things. So. Yeah, and like kind of along a similar line, writing alt text is really like an art in and of itself. Like you want to be clear, but not repetitive. You know, <clears throat> if it you don't want your alt text to kind of like read the same copy as if you got you know text below and it's saying the same thing, that's just duplicate for somebody to have to listen to with a, a screen reader. Yeah, absolutely. Do you ever just read out to yourself this like how it reads? Yeah, you, always. Yeah, it's important to make sure that like, does this, you know, does it make sense? Do I understand if I wasn't looking at this image, I know what I'm looking at and, you know, does it have, but not so much detail that, you know, it's taking away from the context that it's in. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's really Every, an art. Everybody in chat is talking about their favorite movies. Top Gun is another. Oh, wait, the new one or the old one? I wonder, did he, actually, they're both pretty great. But the new one was pretty fantastic. Yeah, and I think the, uh, the new Top Gun Maverick, I think that's the new one, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen it, admittedly. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, and Lord of the Rings is another one that... I guess the whole series, not not one specific, but no thing. Yeah. Okay, I'll actually admit I have never fully finished the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. I've seen the oh, first no. two, and then parts of the end of the last one. I, I've <laughs> never fully seen all of it. I feel terrible. But on the movie app, I'll add it to my watch list. And I finally go ahead and there uh, you go. check it out. There it goes. All right, so I got a scenario here, which should be research because we did do some research. Uh, we did do an idea of like, okay, how are we gonna set this up? How are we supposed to? What? Who are our competitive and comparisons? Competitive and comparative and competitive uh, analysis. Analysis, yeah. Yeah. A lot of word I was just thinking about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be our competitive, and then we're going to make a copy of this. That would be like this, living outside and yeah, okay. When you're setting these up, do you ever think about like, oh, I, this element here is kind of similar to another element that I've used and maybe try to like make those to kind of like components the same so you can kind of like reuse elements oh uh, all the time i yeah you know it saves a lot of time when you're designing out things for design systems and working with engineers it just in fact you reuse component i'm all for it i am if we just have to change a slight like text styling for it let's do it because it just saves us time to rebuild it in code. It saves us time having to re-scope or respec it and redline it. Yeah, I just, I could find something that saves us time. I am not gonna write here. But it should not come at the cost of the user experience. I think that's one yeah. big thing. Right. Definitely. So when you're putting these together, are you thinking like, this is the order in which, you know, we went through the process. I know that you might like move one step forward, two steps back, kind of like through these phases, but are these generally like, all right, well, we, you know, we're thinking about research, we're moving into, you know, information architecture here. Like, is that how you tend to like, you present a case study, like how you would kind of work through the problem? Yeah, I would normally, where I normally would set up a case study with how I worked through the problem as kind of a timeline. If they were, maybe this is just my scientific or job thing is like, okay, this is this is the timeline of all of this. And it's almost like a, uh, it's, it's been a minute since it was, what's it called when you do the half sheet of a geological formation? And it's like the strut. Oh man, I wonder if Jack could help me out here. The, are you talking about like those ge we, the geo blocks we were talking the about? I can't think of what they're called specifically, but I know that's what we call them. <laughs> yeah, they're like the cutaways. The cutaways, and he has all of those 
different uh, layers. Layers. So like, mm-hmm. This is how I kind of think of it. It's like, okay, yeah, you're gonna go great... down. This is what this is what we're doing. You're just taking a slice out and seeing all of the parts that came together for the whole. Yeah, exactly. And I don't want to show every little thing because I think it's kind of impossible to be able to do that. Oh, that's not gonna look good. Let's just keep it here. Because it's just too much sometimes, depending on the on the context of the of the project. So uh, context, context. Um of the project. So I try to balance it. Maybe I remove or shorten stuff out. This is just a wireframe. So maybe as we're walking through, like, you know what, maybe we don't really need all of this. We could add this as a blurb within the competitive. Or we just combine these two and make it really simple. So what were we? What were we doing? What was I saying here? Oh yeah, so I think I was noticing that we had two blocks of text. So maybe we have this as a image, but we'll come back to that later. Who knows? Okay. Another thing is I noticed is that we have columns and then we have items like this, where they're one larger thing. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to know, I wonder how this is gonna break up when we do smaller breakpoints. Like how is this gonna stack on a iPad, right? Right. 768. Yeah. Do we put this on top of the table of contents? Do we know with us? Reverse it. Same with yeah, the straight right. down. Mm. It depends on uh, you know, like is it is the summary in the table of contents are that are they individually when they're stacked, are they gonna like space out too far, you know, and look visually awkward? Or but then like are they gonna be too tight if they're in like one space? Or maybe you do like a stack that that two column table of text but then you've got like the summary and maybe it's not the same length so it can't be side by side <sighs> so many questions <laughs> yeah this is and this is just on the wireframe part we haven't got the actual copy ah, okay well let's not get stressed out so <laughs> just yet this is this is not a real project uh for, for a client so yeah but you're doing it's, great uh, Okay. You cool, make yeah. you're flying through these. We're about half an hour in to the oh. stream, and we've got like I don't even know. You're not onto almost onto the second page here. So, and that is why a wireframe helps. It really helps because you already have an idea of how this is set up, and you just kind of mark things up as you go along, and you make mistakes. You. You can make the mistakes a little bit easier on the on the sketch. And okay. Perfect. So let's see. We got ourselves. Wade is saying, to be fair, there are like nine endings to Return of the King from that's the Lord of the Rings movie. Lord of the Rings discussion is happening in the chat. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. I've heard good things about the show. I have seen, I saw the first, I know there's like three episodes out now. I saw the first two. I haven't seen the the third yet. I haven't had time, but yeah, it's night. I mean, it's Good. the production value is crazy. It's like oh, really visually stunning. Okay. I've heard, yeah, I, I've heard the money shows. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Do you work on any particular um, grid or maybe like on eights or tens, fours? Uh, eight. I work, you know, um, eight pixel grid. I don't stick to, um, I tend to not work with like the full grid like you've got in the background. I tend to work with like, I'll set up some guides for myself. Mm. Uh, occasionally I'll flip on the grid, but I find it just like really hard for me to, I get really like in the weeds with the grid view like this. Um, I'll start to get really like, ah, and I'll try to like readjust everything over and over again. So I like to stick to like, okay, these are the kind of like sizes. I, this is, this is the size I want to work in. And then I also like to use stacks and padding, um, to kind of keep the consistent like spacing that I want. Um, in certain elements, so. 
Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm fighting every uh, being, every fiber of my being to keep me from right like, to in the weeds right now. Like this 20s, like now this should be 24 or 16. Yeah. It's just a little <laughs> fire wire for you guys. It's, it's cool. We'll get yeah. to that. Let's see. Hi. What's in the name? I think one thing I, I like about the... I always get into is like the um, the lore videos of things like Lord of the Rings and I don't know maybe 40k or things like that. I always annoy my girlfriend with that on the in the background. <laughs> uh, what's in the oh yeah? So we talked about last time we were here. We we're talking about a name. Uh, we didn't have a name for this app. Binge it. We ran through quite a few. We binge it one. But you know what we're going to need is a tagline. So we're going to call it Binge It up here. But kind of enjoy, you know, kind of like that tagline you see in movie posters. Um, I can't, and I'm, I just can't think of one right now. So maybe chat can help me out. Oh, yeah. Chat, let us know what the tagline for this app yeah, should be. Similar to like a movie poster tagline. Want something that's kind of like, punchy and you know memorable yeah and i have uh horror movies highlighted here just because nice. it's it spoopy time season. it's the season <laughs> and, yes. and I, I just love horror movies um they're just so much fun uh the one up there i have is krampus and freaky freaky was probably good uh, I am, I do not know anything about Freaky. I don't know what yeah, that is. It's like this weird, messed up Freaky Friday thing where All right. where it's a it's a horror movie version of it, but fun. It's a little bit away. All right. Also, also recommend is Krampus. That one's. Weird. I have heard of that, um, but I have not seen that. So, give me. I'm getting lots of movie recommendations today. I know, I gotta <laughs> cool it on this. Uh, Wade's asking, uh, we've got a question over from YouTube. Yeah. What could be the ideal padding and margin within elements? That's a, a big question. Oh, I know, with a, not a solid answer. Right, um, I, I, don't, I don't know that there is like one answer. I don't think so either, it really depends on the on, on the context and with your adding the content. Yeah. And also just the visual, op the optical uh, visual of it too. Sometimes if you have items that are just all on one background, maybe you could get away with lesser padding between elements just because of, of that. Maybe if you have multiple background colors, you might have to space them out a little bit more. Um, bigger images could need less padding. Uh, yeah, I don't know. How, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with all that. I don't think there's one particular. I mean, and plus, aside from like, it depends on the the context. What are you showing? You know, is it like you said, like we're we talking like full size image, full with image? Are we talking like you know side by side image and text? You know, what is the text and image sitting on? Aside from all of that, there's also like, you don't want your designs to always look the same. <laughs> so there's like, you want to add some variety, uh, both in like, you know, uh, how you're layering these elements here. Like you've got, you know, two images with text, you've got like text and image. We've got some smaller images with like, you know, one third and two third text. So it kind of like visually breaks it up. Um, so the user isn't like met with a wall of same because it's hard to look at um, and your eyes just kind of glaze over. So, and just in general on the web, like, you know, you want your design to stand out. So adding some variety is, is a good thing. I agree. Yeah, it's, it's really dependent. It's but that being say. said, I think variety is good as long as there's logic to it um mm -hmm. so like we talked about with you know design systems we touched on it a little bit but like just knowing uh having a general idea 
of, you know, okay, I, I want, you know, this, these, this spacing throughout some kind of rule you set for yourself in general to kind of follow. As long as you know that, I think you're, you'll be in good shape. Alright. Sorry. Um, so for context, I just got through what's in the name. So we're, we were talking about that. And now we're moving on to the high fi wireframes, what have we built out previously. So we're gonna be talking about those. We're gonna be talking about what was built. Uh, we might not show everything just because we don't want to uh, take up too much space showing off every bit of the screens that was there. But we will show all of those items towards the end um, at the very bottom. That way they have a fuel, full breadth of what we, we did and what's there. Um, one thing I do want to highlight as I'm going through this was also variants. Now, I didn't do variants last time I was here and I didn't show them, but this is one of those things where I'll probably be doing afterwards just to kind of expand on and highlight that. I have a great, pretty picture here but that's not where a lot of this stuff just ends. You know, you have to, it will be nice to give your engineering friends uh, information on how things transition and state and, and things like that. So, you know, how, and in this particular case, I'm gonna be looking at buttons as well as maybe text input areas. So let's see, I had a button around here somewhere. So you're talking Maybe. about showing like the different states of a button? Yeah, yeah. So different states of a button. It may seem pretty small, but it makes a big impact. Variance. Let's just say buttons and text input. So things like default. How's this supposed to look like when you just look at it and it's just staying there minding its own business? And then you come over and you're like, hey, what's happening here? What happens if I do something I'm not supposed to? Error. What's an error look like? If a text, if a button has an error, right? So there's that. And okay, so let's do text and text and what is what we're gonna do. Input search. So what happens when it looks like I have inputted something? Input selected. I can't read my own writing. There it goes. Um it's one thing, you know, it could be seen as boring, but it's also really, really important is creating forms. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Every company has them one way or another. Uh, sign up sheets, login, account profiles. Well, is it search? How is that supposed to look, right? So all this stuff has a way of also engrossing your user base into the app disabled. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll use you. And the focus state, so how it's supposed to look like if you focus, if someone's using a screen reader and they're focused using tabs, how it's supposed to look like? This helps tell people a lot about like your way of thinking too. It's like, okay, how does this person look at these items and then see how do they think about those stages all of those different the depth of even that particular thing and that shows hey though i'm not just thinking about that first layer that first part of the of the app i'm thinking about all of these other smaller things like all these other levels of the geographic <laughs> geological uh geoblock. Um, land. geoblock did someone say it did someone find out what it is no, no? that was just me <laughs> oh okay you could have just fooled me you could have, you could have lied it's like that's what it is yeah totally okay <laughs> Geo blocks. <laughs> cool. So we got this. Yeah, and you know, it's again like you, you, you're kind of like going from more starting with the summary, going through the process, and you're going into like, all right, here's you know the overall structure with the wireframes, and then here's some very specific examples I want to pull out to like talk about how I solve these problems. So um, you're kind of giving the client or potential client or whoever's looking at your site or project what you know the overall like this is what i solved the problems not only from like an overall standpoint but from like these smaller you know details as well exactly 
Uh, exactly. Do you ever spec out or like redline it, or do you do you have a design system that you you work with or reuse, or how, yeah. how hard do you think the design system is? Actually, I should just like go back to that question. Yeah, I mean, I work at an agency, so the work isn't uh, it's like fast paced, um, and so I think of every project that I work on ultimately ends up being a system, whether or not we go through and like make that a um, separate sort of deliverable or not. Um, it always kind of ends up there. I don't think it's possible to not create a system while you're working, you know, systematize your design. Um, but yeah, I think it, it depends on whether or not that ends up being a, depending on the client and the type of work, whether or not that ends up being a sort of um, specific deliverable, deliverable or not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, not but yeah, wants it. yeah. Uh, when we, you know, when I, when I, we hand stuff off to like developers, we do make sure to use like the, that assets panel and put all of our character styles in and like put all of our, um, the color colors in and uh the groups are really nice i'm i'm a really big fan of the grouping that you got now in xd so you can group like okay these are uh you know we've got we've got large and small text so we've got you know character styles for desktop maybe we've got character styles are different on mobile um all of your components it's so helpful yeah, and all that stuff kind of gets translated to the for the developer when you do like an export for dev, share for dev. Make things easier for your engineering friends, guys. It helps. Uh, yeah, definitely. Especially when you're doing QA too, when you have to fix stuff, because uh, it always happens. Yep. Okay, so I am. Almost, I'm pretty much all dart boards. We're not playing with darts. <laughs> it's oh, XD oh. wants me. Okay, you know what, XD? I'm not going to argue with you. Let's do it. <laughs> I have a feeling you probably know more than me. Um, <laughs> it's cool. So there we go. We did it, guys. Um, it didn't take that long. We were able to take what we had here on the wireframe, um, sketch it. I should say, and then move it over into a wireframe. Now, even though we have this here and we've tried to translate things over, things change in translation sometimes between sketches and wireframes. And the same thing happens when we go from lo-fi to wi-fi. So let's see if we can start plugging things in and see where this takes us. Is this going to be, this will be new. I haven't, I haven't done this yet. We're both going to discover stuff. Maybe good, maybe bad. It's going to be like a movie. It's going to go up and down. <laughs> this is not to be ultra low. This is just low, lo-fi. Some lo-fi beats be pretty sweet. Bye. You're just joining us. Alex is working on setting up a uh, portfolio. Uh, case study for a movie app that Alex did on Adobe Live. So we're going through the wireframe process and now we're going into um, more of the design, um, high fidelity screen here. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, also be sure to follow the new um, Adobe Live YouTube channel if you're watching over on YouTube. I wonder if, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to ask how you feel about presenting uh, the screens on the, like on mockups that are like, they, they look very, very pretty. Uh, I like doing it as a hero image because that's what's supposed to be that kind of cool wow factor stuff. But after that, I don't like doing it because it's not, it's not, uh, I don't want to say real, but how do you how do you say it? it's like it's not the design itself. You're not 
you want to show what it is as opposed to how it's supposed to be like in, in the mock. Um, so I prefer to show the entire artboard, like the full length, um, straight towards you, kind of like, uh, let, me, let me bring it over. I got all of these ready to go. Okay, like this. I like showing it like this because then I'm able to point things out. I can annotate items like this is supposed to be like this and this is the reason why I did it. If I have it in a mock, you could still do that, but um, yeah, it might, there might be a distraction of like the mock itself. And you know, uh, another thing is like with going into meetings, I try to take away as much as possible if the person doesn't need to see to focus on the work itself. Otherwise, we're like, well, you know, maybe we're not supposed, maybe we should try it on a 390 iPhone instead of a 375. It's like, I thought we were here to talk about the carousel. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, I, I definitely, clients can get like, again, like in the weeds of things that like, it happens a lot in, I don't know, for me in the like information architecture, like the, when it comes to like a site map type of a thing or something, clients will get hung up on like the labels for things. And you're like, okay, but the label can change. It's not, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> you know? Or, yeah. Or the copy. Just like, and... Yeah. Just getting hung up on things. It's like not the focus. And so, yeah, that can uh, happen when you've got like, they're focusing on the mock-up and not the design. It's classic. It always happens. It always happens. Do you like... I know we talked about this. You like how to have a case study kind of match the branding, the kind of match the work that's being shown. Right? I think, yeah, I I do like when they feel like they belong together. I like it's hard to say. So I personally, yes, I think I prefer to have a case study that kind of matches the style of the project. That being said, I think you can get a little bit carried away with it. Like you don't want, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if, if it's got some kind of like wild branding, you just, you still want to make sure that like the information is the focus. Right. Um, but I've also seen, uh, case studies where they're using like a consistent sort of style for their case study. Like every case study has the same look and feel. And I think that's okay too. As long as it's just a conscious choice on how you present your work, whether it's I'm always going to make a project, my projects kind of like be on brand or they're going to well be on brand for the project or be a consistent brand in and of themselves. I think either option is really, really OK. I personally like when they're branded because I just I think it's fun. Let's do it. Let's make this branded. <laughs> Let's do it, guys. We got this. OK. So this is our nav bar, because we always need one. Otherwise, not giving them a way to navigate the site. So it's all good. Let's do it, nav bar. All right, so that's probably just going to shift between black and white, depending on our background, just to make things kind of consistent across all pages. I think uh, I agree we should probably do something with branding, but I also think we should have a consistency across the entire website when it comes to things that are a universal or a global component, uh, do, just with this. So let's do that and we'll call this on by. All right, so should we go dark? The background? That is such a big debate right now. Now, you know, we've got the web now, user preference. They can set, you know, you can set your own light or dark mode and like how we handle that on the web is like a, a huge thing right now. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Yeah. Dark. Um, Maybe nap or light. I say if we're gonna go. Yeah, well, with, no, no, not that. Not that. If we're, if we're gonna go with the keeping the project on brand, I think with the dark. I don't know because you don't want to like maybe the white is good because or light because it gives contrast against the darker screens. Um, or maybe you do a mix, like we've got some parts of the case study that present on the dark background and some parts that are on the light background. 
Yeah, let's do it. I think let's take it section by section. Um, yeah, I think maybe for that, yeah, any place that you've got those screens on, maybe keep it light so they stand out. Yeah, let's turn off the layout. I don't need you right now. Okay, so that's how it looks. Keep this kind of light. Maybe we could increase this a little bit so it kind of stands out like this. Maybe that's too much. I don't know. See, let's just move on. Let's go with it. <laughs> I'm cool with it. This is what yeah. happens. You get to in the weeds. It's all right. Did we find a tagline? No, we don't have a tagline okay. yet. Let's see. So, um, it's cool. We could find one. Yeah, maybe going back through. I don't know. <sighs> this doesn't look so great against the white, so we could change when it's cool. Let's try that far. I think that looks a better. Just so that people can be able to see it. Yep. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it's okay. We can do this. Wait, is reminding everybody in the chat that we need a tagline. Not I'll come up with something terrible. <laughs> um, I have to think as well. I don't. Let's pinch it. Cool. That is Benjamin. It's right here. I'll set up the layout. So I also need to have a good enough contrast against everything. Right? Yellow just was not working. And yeah. what's great is if I think this is okay, I mean, this is not a necessity for somebody to read. But if you were to go in and check out this cool app, uh, where is it? Stark was here. Hmm. Hmm. That's okay. Um, there's a cool app called Stark on here that you can find. And it's really neat because what it does is shows you the contrast between what's in the foreground and the background and gives you kind of ally accessibility um, check checkers. So it shows like AAA versus AA, make sure that people who, that it's, it's contrast enough to the point where that, and a lot of people can see it from a wide range of um, visual users, visual yeah. parent users. So with Stark, you can select, yeah, you can like select two things. So the foreground and the background, and you can do a comparison between those two. And it'll tell you the contrast ratio. I think I always mess up double A because it's like, I think it's 4.35 for the contrast ratio. And then Triple A is 7.1 or 7 point something um, that you want to have. And that's like the uh, ratio, like the difference between the two, um, two colors. What do you think that? makes sense? Yes, hmm? <laughs> it, oh, it totally makes sense. Uh, sorry, I got into this. No, it's okay. Thing. Yeah, I'm just going to put it lives. It's, it's like it's very horror movie themed right now <laughs> yeah i just i can't get away from it it's just it's creeping in my brain because of halloween time all right so it lives um spending enough time i'm not sure how i feel about the multiple different fonts now all at once yeah having the two like sort of uh we'll come back to it it's okay but this is, this is what design is. This is iterative. We find things we don't like. We try to change them. We always come back to that. It's, just... it's even named Monster Mash. I love it. I know, right? It's just so great. So everybody maybe who is joining to maybe inspire uh, the chat, let us know a little bit. Give us a little summary. Maybe we can move on to the summary and you can give us like a brief synopsis of what this is to help inspire some taglines. Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do a pro and let's do a quick summary. Uh, this okay is a 
movie tracking app that you can share with friends. So that if you get movie recommendations constantly from friends who are way too into things like Paddington or <laughs> the last Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> You know, you could always track it and say, like, all right, these are my horror movie specials for the next two months. Not Paddington, that's not a horror movie, but unless you're neighbors with them, then maybe. And this is a movie tracking app. This is a movie tracking app that you can create with friends and family. There it goes. No, the MVP is really small. I don't ever think when you're building or doing project apps, it has to be really complicated. It'll have to be real, it'll have to be really niche. Or like you're finally solving this problem that could be real. It's like, yeah, you're solving a problem, but they, they're more about showing off how you think, how you, how you approach a problem, how you, um, yeah, how you approach a problem, how you think. And you're, that's what you're trying to show off people who are looking at your, at your portfolio. Yeah, I think nope. that's important. An important note there is like it's not, um, it, the bit of course like the beautiful images are great to see, but um, it's important. Clients want to know how you how you think, how you solve problems. I mean, that's part of the the doing the work. Exactly. Way to saying is it just movies? Binge makes me think of watching a series. So. Okay, this is, this is a movie series tracking app. Whoa, it just changed the entire thing <laughs> with, with one word. Uh, yeah, we could do that too. All right, movie series app. Cool, there it goes. I might come back to this white card later, try mm. some things slightly different. Steve also has a good idea. Uh, Steve says it could have to do with a franchise, like a, a bunch, a series of movies that are all related as well. Nine Star Wars movies. That's, yeah. a, that's a binge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we got a card. We got this. We're all set. Don't like this white, but I think we should first move on and keep going down and approach the rest of this. Then we'll come back. Okay. Yeah, I think that's, again, an important thing to note is like, you know, you start on something and then you're like, you can get like stuck on one thing. And sometimes the solution is in solving another problem farther down. So like, oh, now, you know, I, I did this over here. And now I kind of think I have an idea for how I want to handle it up there. It happens. Yeah, I, I do that all the time. It's just, it's one of those things where you're, you're solving another you're creating another component. It's like, oh, this totally works here. I could just reuse that. It's like, cool. why not just Or do just that? the like, oh, you know, I like this color here. And, you know, like you, you're like figuring it out, like pieces of something might spur inspiration for how you go back and change something else. Exactly. Um, okay, so... This is the, the big question. How are we doing learning up some? Or do you guys going to see me actually write out <laughs> some terrible copy on the fly? Let's um, do. You could do, there are like, not that we, there are plugins that will put in like fun copy for you, like different oh, lower lips and plugins. <laughs> really? I'm not seeing this. Like what? Oh, like I'm trying to, so there's like a, bakery ipsum one that i know of <laughs> it's like it's just because it has like donuts and stuff <laughs> um i think the chat had mentioned a couple earlier on now i have to scroll up and find them lorem ipsum uh scrolling scrolling oh uh, it looks like there's just a link to different generators Zombie Ipsum would be good. Bacon Ipsum, I've heard of that one. Maybe it's not bakery. I think it might be this cupcake Ipsum is what I'm thinking of. There's like a, a one though that I think we'll pull in. I haven't used it in a while, but there used to be one for XD that I know of that will pull in like Wikipedia. 
like what? content yeah they like pull in content like copy um it's random it's kind of cool though you learn something new as you're just placing stuff in there the bacon if someone that's one i want to check out bacon if some or maybe it's not wikipedia i know it'll like pull in let me open up my xd and see what what i'm thinking of that ourselves a summary I don't think I would actually have this much text for a summary. Let's go ahead and remove some of this. So it looks a little smaller. Oh, maybe I'm not. Maybe I don't have it installed. I used to. I do have a Lorem Ipsum plugin, though, in general. What's some it's, of your favorite plugins, speaking of? Stark is probably the, the one. Uh, unfortunately, it's not, it's not working right now, but Stark is pretty amazing if you get a chance. Uh, the accessibility stuff in its own would be an amazing thing, but it's like other items part of it. Um, I like humans illustration, humans, it's pretty cool. What else? Um, UI faces, UI faces like fills in faces you, you need. Yeah, those were some mine icons for design is also really nice, especially when you're doing like wireframes, you could just throw them right in there and not have to create something bespoke. So that those are some of mine. How about yours? So Wikify is the one I was thinking of that will pull in Wikipedia content. Um, I just did like a quick search to find it. But I am my favorite plugin that I use every project is the whiteboard plugin, which I know you're a fan of as well. Um, mm -hmm. That one, I just find it to be so handy for putting together uh, like flow charts and, and notes and like doing like brainstorming actually in XD or like bringing over notes to XD. Um, I also like, I, I think everybody has icons for design in, <laughs> installed. <laughs> um, it's that good. It's just yeah. that good. <laughs> and then uh, the other ones that I probably use the most are, um, I use Lottie files a lot. So, uh, the Lottie files plugin to pull in. Which is that one? Lottie files. So you can place, um, little animations, little animated, actually JavaScript animations, but, um, you can pull them in to XD if you are using so Lottie files is like an actual website and there's a plugin that you can install for After Effects that lets you export these little JavaScript animations and they you can you know put them right in the prototype and they play. Um, but you can also then use those little JavaScript files in your site. So the Lottie animation like you can place them in the prototype, but you can also use them on your on your site as well. They're they're uh, like animated SVGs, so you can also upload um, your SVG to the Lottie uh, site, and it has a couple of like it has like a little editor that lets you adjust some parameters and do like some basic animation. So if you wanted something to like dissolve in or scale up, it does stuff like that um, without having to do the animation in After Effects. But they're really handy for like little quick little UI elements that you want to have um, animated, like little animated icons or something. Um, they're fun. Yeah, I, I love seeing little animated stuff. It, it's such like a small detail, but it really adds a lot to a site. She was with a lot of polish, I should say. So I'm quickly adding a duration here. Annika saying, I love a good Pablo Stanley plugin. Which is so good. Sorry. One. Sometimes you get two in the weeds and duration. Okay. Got this. I got to move away from this area. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep looking at it. <laughs> Does, does yeah. that happen to you? Oh, yeah. That's what I was saying earlier. It's like, I just sometimes you have to just move. And you know, then you'll find the solution. Like you'll be working on something else, and it'll hit you. Like, oh, I now I know exactly what I want to go do, and you'll go back, and it'll all make sense. So, 
uh, it's really, that's really important uh, to step away from whether it's just like scrolling down the page or literally walking away from the project for like, you know, 15, 20 minutes at least uh, to get a, like out of that space. Cause you can get so, it's like when you look at a word like for so long that it no longer, you're like, is that even spelled right? I, I can't even, you know, like, and you get that feeling when you're looking at a word. <laughs> I, oh, oh, for real. So it's, it just loses all meaning. Yeah. That's how it feels when you're stuck on like the same design problem and you're just like, I just need to, I just need to move on. Yeah. Uh, okay. We are going to move on. We have our summary. We have our quick links. So I know these aren't actually the quick links, but I'm just filling it in. It's cool. We'll come back yeah. and, and do that. So now we're going to do our problem statement and our image. So let's do that. So we could just these over here. And I, this is this is a good uh, question for you. How do you feel about viewports? Do you often try to fill out the full viewport or kind of peek at other items uh, towards the bottom? Are you or talking about where the like that um, that yeah, line is? Yeah, a little line. Yeah um it's you know you you try to you know have that little hint you know really anywhere right do the same thing when you like have something that's like scrolling off the screen like let's say you have a carousel that's you know it, it slides on a mobile device or something you want to have that little hint that kind of indicates to the viewer like oh there's something over here you know just like there's something peeking it's hard to um, it's hard to always anticipate how it's going to work on all screen sizes. Uh, that's sort of become like a, you know, keeping things above the fold has become sort of more difficult with depending on the screen size. But um, for sure, you always want to try to have a little bit peeking up. In my Just a opinion. little. I I fully agree because you want. You have to have some kind of forehead so it lets people know, like, hey, this is what is going to happen. Uh, I'm so I'm using very really quickly is the Creative Cloud, and I got a couple of stock photos here. So I wanted to get a couple of things just to kind of break things up in case I don't have something that still kind of shows and is it within the theme of the of the app itself. So I'm going to use Rear Planet because I know you like sci-fi. Yeah. Let's see. Is it big enough? <laughs> I do. Right. It's true. Sci-fi and donuts. Sci-fi and donuts. Oh Who yeah, that's my jam. Weird retro planet. sci-fi. <laughs> yeah. I dig it too. I love retro love sci-fi. It. Blade Runner had a really cool retro to it. Yes. Well, Sid Mead. I mean, doesn't get better than that. One of my favorite artists in general. What do you think of the new Blade Runner 2049? I thought it was fun. I think, here's my hot take. I think people get too nostalgic about things. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy the movie. You know, just enjoy it for what it is. So I thought, uh, I think, you know, have fun. Just have fun. I am with you there. <laughs> I honestly think it's better than the first one. That's my hot take. Oh. Yeah, that I went there. Take. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just maybe I shouldn't I shouldn't say, but I, I just think Denny Manu's better director. <laughs> that it is was, awesome. It's very good. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how the chat responds. <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite snack food for like maybe oh. watching a movie or watching a show or something? I have a big okay, two. I have two. First. I, we have, I'm from Chicago originally, and there's a, it, the Chicago mix popcorn. So it's caramel corn and cheese popcorn together, like all mixed up. And it mm. sounds really weird, but it's so good together. And so that's like my favorite. If I'm going to have popcorn, I want the the cheese and caramel corn mixed up together. Um, I've, I've had that. It's and so it's good. delicious. Yes. <laughs> and addictive. Like you can eat like the whole bag not even think about it um but I'm a big sweet I have a big sweet tooth so if I'm gonna be at like a theater I'm like the one that wants the overpriced candy that's me 100 percent 
I do like it. I do like sweet things here and there. Wait, what kind of sweet, what kind of candy are we talking about? Um, probably the the fruity ones like the Mike and Ikes. I like the like fruity. I'm not so big of a fan. I, when I was younger, I used to like the um the uh the snow caps but that's not really those. like yeah they're like the little they're like little chocolate i don't know how to describe them they're like little chocolate circles and they have like little white sprinkles over top that look like snow um i used to really like those but i, I would go more for like the i would go for the mike and ikes these days i don't think i've ever had a mike and ikes or they're like the caps. little what? Uh, like, what theater are you going to? <laughs> I I don't know. Apparently, not not a good one because I'm, they're like I've never little, had these. They're like little fruit. I don't know how to describe them. They're like I really like the green ones personally, but they have they're like little they're like little gummies almost like little gummy candy, like fruity gummy candy is how I would describe them. Well, I'm down next time I go to theater. Maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. Yeah, I said I I'm the one that's always buying the overpriced candy like that. I, <laughs> always. It's I I'm down. Like I I do that. I don't do the candy, but I get like popcorn or yeah, oh yeah, yeah things like that. Okay. So Wade's what asking you? what the what the popcorn. I think it's just called the Chicago Mix Wade. So there you go. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Alex. No, no, no. I, I do think that's way more important to know about the, <laughs> this delicious candy because it is good. I got it as a gift. I got a small tin of it as a gift before. And every once in a while, I look at the side, I'm like, should I order it? Because I know if I order it, I'm just going to eat it all in one go. How do you feel about um, carousels and how we bridge them, right? So here we have it. We'll get your take on this. We have it so it goes all the way towards the edge, but do you ever feather where it's supposed to break? You're oh, you're side. talking about like the images, like how they yeah. kind of fade on the sides? Yeah, that's a, a good question. I think because you've got the arrows at the top, I would probably, I would, I might do that there. Um, if it was something like, there was no indication of how you navigated that, then I would want to keep that edge hard so and visible. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, with the air, I mean, it will look, it'll look nice on the dark background for sure to have it kind of faded off. All right, let's do it then. Let's do it guys, let's fade it in. Let's use that last column. Here, let me just do kind of a gradient. How do you guys get into focus mode? Because I always have a hard time with that. Yeah, that's a good question. Question for the chat. What? Yeah. How do you guys get into the zone of concentration when you're working on a project? How about I you? Think for me, it's putting stuff, it's really just like getting stuff on the page. It's that like white canvas, blank canvas uh, that is, can be intimidating. So I think just getting getting some stuff down, even if it's just like boxes that I know I'm gonna change later, just making that first step to like put things out on the page. And then it'll all start to flow from there. Um, I say all the time too that I, so I work remotely. Um, so I like to have Adobe Live on 24 seven um, while working. Cause it makes you feel like you're like working with other people. I don't know, you get that like interaction, at least like having something. I'm not like 100% invested in like the, what's going on, like auditorily, but just the presence of another, some kind of background noise is important, I think. I, I fully agree. Um, working from home, while well, it's a very privileged to do, mm -hmm. uh, make you feel a little lonely sometimes, you know? You Definitely. It's just you and a screen and work. So it's nice having something there, really, to um, break things up or feel like you have other people. 
Josh, Joshua brings up a good point too. I use coffee to get my started. Uh, me started. Yeah, I forgot about that. Are you a coffee drinker? I, I, I'm, I'm holding off from drinking oh, yeah. too much, but I love coffee. How about you? Oh yeah, I am a cold. I am a cold brew fan, so I drink a lot of cold brew instead of hot coffee. But I just haven't been able to get into cold brew. What's the trick? I don't know. I don't know. It's just a, I guess, a personal preference. Um, I make it at home, so you can make like a big batch and put it in the fridge. I think that's probably the appeal to me to, of it to me. Mm -hmm. Honestly, is that like I don't have to think about it. If I have to think too hard about making coffee in the morning I like I don't want to think about it so I just take the you know the the um I don't know like jug of it out of the fridge and like pour it into a glass you have to cut it with something so like water or I really like oat milk um because it's like a concentrate if that makes oh, sense oh okay so you take like it's like 12 ounces of coffee beans and you grind them coarse, and then you have to like let them sit in cold water um, for like 24 hours or like overnight. Um, and then you get a concentrate at the end that you uh, you have to like mix with something. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to be awake for, if you poured yourself like an eight ounce glass of that, you'd be awake for several days probably. Okay. Uh, that's very dangerous for me because I will, <laughs> I just go through coffee and sometimes I'm not careful and I drink too much. Yeah. And then I start feeling it. <laughs> uh -huh. I will 100% drink too much of this. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing you have to, you can't just like pour it straight because it will, um, it's a concentrate. So you have to mix it with water. Or... Yeah. I'm so very quickly, I'm doing the carousel, the scenario. And this is kind of what's telling people what this was, what the duration is, how it came about doing it, um, and as little worse as possible, uh, and kind of just showing. So here, I mean, we talked about this before, I would put alt text. This one's kind of a bit harder because this does have text inside the slides itself. Uh, I probably wouldn't always recommend this, probably just like tell them, but just for the sake of this, you know, we, I'm putting it up there. And just would to kind of show. So would that, you like light box that or something so, so that people could see like a larger view or you think they would just, you just keep those, the carousel small size? No, I would definitely light box this in particular just because there are text. Mm -hmm. And if they want to, we can bring it up. You never know how this might scale. Well, you should know how it scales when it comes to different breakpoints and how it's supposed right. to enlarge or resize and sometimes it can be so small where it's hard to kind of read it and the resolution of it kind of switches or changes depending on the compression of the wi-fi to uh wi-fi is right the internet so it's always i think i'm going to add a light box to this i'm not going to do it now right. but probably add some kind of thing to show like hey it's hoverable and you click on it it opens i am however going to do something very quickly for these buttons I want to add a couple of things to these things to show. You can click on them. So let's do that. I want to make these a component. And I'm about to stay. It's pretty cool. It gives you hover states. You can automatically start applying things here. So hover state things I'm going to do is make this. Oh, add. so Wade is asking for the novice. What does light boxing mean? Um, so that just means that if you've ever been on a site and you click on, there's like a thumbnail of an image and you click on it, like a small image, it will bring up like a larger, like overlay view of that image. Um, so you can see it larger. That's all that means. At least, I, correct, Alex? Are we on the yeah, same thing? That's, yeah, that's how I, I interpret it as well. So I added a small drop shadow here, nothing fancy, but just something that'll indicate like, hey, this is, you're over it and this is what's happening. I'm not gonna get too into the weeds of it, so, but it's like this. It's very subtle, it's nice. Kind of like, uh, it feels like the vibe for like a, a movie 
like it's very like we're talking about being on brand but it kind of feels like lights you know like totally on purpose move. yeah I totally that that was that was not a uh yeah we got this i, I thought exactly <laughs> the same uh i'm gonna shrink this so for my tap selection i'm just gonna bring this down just a little so i'm gonna turn this from 40 into 38. There it is. Now you have a tap effect. We should probably also come up with a. We don't need to. Save it. Disabled. Okay. I'm just going to go. A L E. This A B L E. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Uh, I got too in the weeds of the design and totally forgot how to spell. So it happens. It happens. Let's go with it, guys. Uh, okay. I'm going to turn this into something that looks a little bit more mm -hmm. not possible to click on. There it goes. And maybe take this and match that same exact thing. So I want to take this color, add it to my little chart there, and just click on it. There it goes. So that when they reach the end of this and all the way towards the right, mm -hmm. they see that some, they just can't go any further. Same thing with the love. So in reality, let's go ahead and take this, delete this. I turn this around and keep it on disable, but keep this on default state. There it goes. That was pretty easy. Yeah, and these but, are all kind of like standard, um, the names for these things, this different states that you put in your component, they're all kind of like, those are pretty standard um, sort of names that like, if you were sharing this with a developer, they would they would know what those kind of states mm -hmm. mean. What I didn't do is a focus state. Let's do, let's do one of those real quick. Since we're already working on this, let's do one, so. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm going to increase it by just a few pixels. Let's do 42. To remove the fill. It's gonna be a lot, make it a little bit bigger. Make this white. There it goes. Nice. Focus. There we go. So if someone starts tabbing through and they tab, 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 they hit this and tab through, and then they'll know what item they're now at through that tab. Oh, let's go back to default state. And now every single time I have one of these, I have all of these. So that's pretty cool. That's what I love about, about XD you could do this so easily all within one thing, rather than having to take everything and try to uh, organize it. It could be very messy. Yeah, right. definitely. It also kind of gives you that context for how they're all gonna look. Um, you know, we talked about how buttons in particular can start to get like, they seem like such a simple thing, but they can start to get complex, like what color background is it over and all that. And you can kind of like play and see how you're, different buttons in their states kind of work throughout your design and, and tweak them as needed. And they all kind of, when you update that single sort of um, main component, they're gonna update across your design. Yeah, that's a big thing, right? Uh, is propagating design changes throughout the design. If you have 20 or 30 screens using the same component and then someone says, I don't like it in that color. Can you change to this? Now you have to change it across 30 different screens yep. and maybe even multiple portions of that screen. Um, it, it becomes hard. So, okay, so now I'm done with the scenario and now I'm doing the research portion. So research, I'm kind of using the same components I did here to here. This time around though, it's only gonna be two. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to redo the work here for this component. It's all no. good. 
So Yay. there's that. And next up, I'm going to be doing is adding competitive and comparative stuff. Got about a half an hour left today with Alex. So um, if you're just joining, Alex is working on a case study for uh, a portfolio site um, in Adobe XD. This is for an app, uh, a movie watching and sharing with friends, kind of an app uh, that Alex uh, worked on on Adobe Live a while back. So now we're taking it to the next level and putting together this really cool case study, thinking about what kind of parts we're going to need to show to um, sort of attract clients and walk them through your process. Yeah. How do you feel about taking a developed app already and then reimagining it versus creating a completely new thing? Um, How do I feel about it? Um, do you have a preference whenever you see things like that? In regards to like a personal project? So like somebody's yeah. working on like a personal project and they take something that already exists. Um, I think it's personally, I think it's nice to make it your own, whatever that kind of means for you. I know that like not everybody is uh, a branding designer and a UI UX designer and an illustrator, but I think it's nice to see it kind of become your own, like make it your own in some way. Um, I think is better than like, you know, uh, I don't know, taking an existing mm -hmm. brand. I, what do you? What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I I agree with with what you said. Is like not everybody's a brand uh, designer and can easily make their own kind of brand stuff and brand designs and, and social and just assets in general. So I think there's a good balance between the two as long as you get things across with what you're trying to show, like, like the, your skill set you're trying to show, I should, I should say. Uh, that being said, I would, if possible, I prefer someone doing their own, I don't want to say a brand, but you know, their own project that isn't affiliated with a particular thing. Yeah, totally. I agree. I think it's nice to see, um, even like you might have been inspired by something that exists out there but you should be making it your own anyways you know what i mean like mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're just recreating uh a carbon copy of an existing kind of an app out there then that's no fun you want to add your own kind of spin on it your own you know functionality your own uh look and feel yeah because that because it show to to me it really shows like okay this person isn't trying to adhere to somebody else's work they're trying to show what they are about with this particular thing so it, it, this it's a blue skies project so how what do you do with that blue skies um, ability yeah I mean you're not hindered by like it can be whatever you want it to be you're not hindered by like oh you know all the stuff that we've talked about like making sure that you could do some kind of crazy animated stuff in there and you know uh maybe maybe a client will come around and say like oh i really want that and they love all the crazy animation and then they're gonna pay a developer to build it you know that would be oh, has that ever happened <laughs> to, to um i mean not kind of yeah i worked on a pro the project i worked on in adobe live my donut app i have a, a client that i'm Wait one second, donut app? Yeah, I did. I created a donut purchasing app, ordering app on when I was on Adobe Live a, lot, a while ago now. And I've been working with that client to, to get there to do a rebrand and a refresh of their site. And their goal is eventually to um, create an app kind of based on what I put together for Adobe Live, although obviously focused for their specific business and mine was just kind of generic but um it kind of it's been like their focus has been with you know the past the pandemic and everything it's been like on 
staying afloat as like a food oriented the food industry in general food and service industries taken a hit so that's been their primary focus so it's been kind of on the back burner yeah but that makes sense yeah for a local company they're like yeah we we want that so it happens it totally it oh it does happen and that it just sounds really cool i kind of really want a donut now you should have a donut after this i think i will what's your favorite kind of donut (laughs) now we're getting into food chat again okay (laughs) yeah it's i mean it's almost lunch ish right so kind of works um my favorite kind of donut a chocolate donut Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. i like a a normal i almost never eat donuts actually i should say but like a normal donut with chocolate glaze nice classic yeah i'm i'm all about the classics how about you uh my favorite donut it's so hard because everybody nobody knows what I'm talking about, is a sour cream donut. Um, and it doesn't have sour cream in it. I mean, it does, but not like what you think. It's, they're sometimes called old fashioned donuts, but they're like the, they're like, they look like plain glazed donuts, but they have like a really like rough surface. Like they're like, uh, like a crackly surface. You would know mm-hmm. them if you saw them. Um, they just have, they're like a denser donut because they're made with, they put sour cream in the, um like the mix when they're making them so they have just a different texture i don't know those are my favorite I, i've never heard of this before but now i gotta see like a fire somewhere yeah it's i mean fine. they're sometimes just called old-fashioned donuts depends old-fashioned donuts okay i'm gonna try it <laughs> if- everybody's like oh sour cream donut <laughs> it's really good trust me <laughs> I think of a bagel when I hear that. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not saying it is. I'm just, you know, sour cream, bread, bagel. There was a place in New York that was doing everything bagel donuts. Um, I have never had one, but I know it was a thing. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, like I think it was like a a donut lab. There's a place in New York that did everything bagel donuts. Like they were, they were donuts with like, everything bagel seasoning on top and cream cheese filling. Yep, that was a thing. Okay. Uh, maybe one day, maybe one day. I'm not saying it's good. It's not, not good. Just, just going to have to warm up to it. Cool. So where are, we are now on the scope and eye part. So this is our photo. This is our, not compared, but this is our context. So what is our MVP? Um, I like creating MVPs. I don't know how you feel about this, uh, but it keeps things within scope because they always end up being scope created. Oh, yeah. No matter what. Yes. This is important documentation to have if you're working on a project to note down, like, what is the most, what are the features that we absolutely need and, you know, indicating, even going as far as, like, this is a must-have, this is a nice-to-have kind of a thing yeah because uh those nice to haves end up becoming must-haves i'm like whoa yeah <laughs> uh-huh. are they are <laughs> they really yep oh, so it's documentation is always really helpful um in some way shape or form just to look back on and try to understand what's happening and what we're going to be doing and setting up timelines too so, yeah, definitely. It's like impossible to uh, schedule out a project if you don't like. I don't if you don't know that. I don't mm-hmm. know how you would. Yeah, you have to bring in engineering time to see how long it's going to take them to engineer out particular features. Because even even the okay, so even this MVP talking about this is um, sign up and login. That sounds easy, but then there's the there's the welcome page. Then you have to do the text input stuff. Then you have to also think about APIs for Google sign in or maybe Apple sign in. 
other sign-ins. <laughs> I don't know how many other sign-ins there are. And then error messages, emails. That's just sign up and log in. I don't know. Do, am I missing anything else? Just for, yeah, for I mean, if you have a login, then you have an account. And then that's like a whole other thing, like account management mm -hmm. for both like the uh the the users themselves managing their account and also like the uh back end for the client to manage like how are you connecting those a lot yeah. to think about account management too so that's that's another thing there so they have to go together so that's one entire flow yeah then there's the actual app yeah I could get pretty hairy pretty quick. Yeah, everything I like to say that everything that you put on the screen has a consequence, you know, like you have to think those things through. Like, what are the consequences of adding this feature? Not that that I mean consequence kind of makes it sound like it's a bad thing, but there's there are always just like you know trade-offs. Yeah. If we decide to it's not that you decide to work, it's kind of a necessity. But for sign up and log in in particular, you have to do the cancel. Maybe that means that you just don't have the time or ability to be able to um, get to the share with friends yet. Maybe that's a fast follow kind of feature that would be coming for the deadline or to make the deadlines of the first portion of just being able to create watch lists, right? Because then you have to also think about how does that connect to other data set information and API and how do you utilize that? Yeah, it's all about setting expectations and yeah, creating timelines and trying to balance all that stuff out. Definitely. It's a lot to just like dump on uh, on the table there. But yeah, these are important questions to ask. So I'm on the wireframe part of just kind of we need to add context here. I'm just going to put title because I'll probably fill this in with something. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so here we are. Talking about the wireframes. I like showing off wireframes to you. Like, do, do I like, like showing them on? Yeah, I like do to you? put them in. Um, yeah. For a number of reasons. I mean, one, there's something that I always do on every project um, in some capacity. And two, like it's important, I think, to show, again, we're talking about that process, right? Like mm -hmm. to do that side by side of like, this is, you know, this is where we end landed in wireframes and then this is how they translated to design and like what sort of changes happened or, um, you know, stuff like that. It also just shows that like, Again, like your thought process, how detailed you get in wireframes, you know? Yeah. I'm not liking all of this gap here. I don't no, know. No, that's I not do. good. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Um, Should I decide to break things up and just bring these a little closer? Kind of. Yeah, you might have to just like space, add some, like space them out a bit. I don't know. That's a tough, that's a tough call. Um, but they're so long. Ugh. Okay, well. I mean, you also don't want to like, because you could scale them up and have them by themselves, but then, and just have run the text across, but then they take up so much space when you're scrolling. Yeah, so. maybe. This is what happens when you run in when you start adding stuff in, you run into these, like you have to adjust your um, your design. Um, you know what? For now, what we'll do is maybe I'll crop these. Yeah, that's an option. And I, I mean, I'm not sure if every like do you need to that's a question you kind of have to ask is like, do you need to see everything on these screens? Um or is there some overlap between mm -hmm. them or can you show, yeah. can you just, can you break them up in some way? Yeah, I would, maybe that would help at least temporarily until you can 
Yeah, let's for now just gonna crop it just to help us kind of not have such a big gap. So let's just put it in there. Oh, page there. Close. Would you ever do like a um like video of like a prototype instead of like single screens? Yeah, so I, you I could would show like you could show like a video that show, shows off the I don't know the wireframes maybe that would fit in that space a little bit better. Probably, I, I would probably do a wireframe video because um, I'll probably go through like okay, I did testing and this is the wireframe, and then followed by like a video of me testing this out with people and even just having people tap on it and there's like nothing happens just seeing what they do and and asking them like what did you think was going to happen when that when uh when you did that i think helps as well okay i'm spending too much time on this but this is kind of stuff we'll come back to and try like okay reframe right. it. but right now we're just putting stuff onto the screen we're seeing how this is going to look like in terms of the entire structure with our actual content um, yeah we've got about 15 15 oh. minutes left so well okay that puts a fire in my step let's, <laughs> let's move maybe on maybe we just go to step jump to like sort of the last thing you want to put together or the last couple of things that you think yeah are most important it. to go through i think it's pretty important for us to uh, that's, that's a hard one a lot of things are so important but let's just do final work sure that's the cool part everyone really enjoys doing and checking out. I also think it's really important for us to discuss what we got out of it, right? What did we learn from it? That's yeah, just, that's that's that says a lot. Mm -hmm. That would work. But everybody in the chat, let us know if you have any more questions for Alex as we are approaching the final 15 minutes. Um, let us know if you have any taglines for the app or the, uh, yeah. Or movie recommendations. Or, or movie recommendations. Food recommendations. Or, I know. Right. <laughs> because I'm about to go eat a donut. It's always oh, food wow. chat with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, food. you don't have to be sorry. <laughs> I'm down for that. Um, okay, so. What are we going to show off? I'm going to show off this and this. So you're kind of pulling out two screens that you want to highlight specifically? Yeah, I am pulling out two screens. I want to highlight these particular ones. I'm going to move these dartboards. <laughs> okay. Cool. So these would be like larger, like core functionality that you want to show off? Um, maybe yeah. the app and then the rest are kind of like, okay, here's how everything works together. Exactly. So what I would probably do is uh, highlight some of these particular screens that show off a very specific thing. Um, things like a text input, like how does this work? Maybe I would add like variations around here somewhere to show like, okay, this is how these particular things happen. Um, this is how this entire homepage looks and how I set it up. And I'll probably do annotations on these. So things like, I would actually make these a little longer. I would set up some kind of context. Hopefully it's not as bad as this. It could just be this breakpoint too. And I think that's another thing is like, this is a very big breakpoint at 1920. So maybe this might end up being a little bit smaller like this. So you're talking about the width? Yeah, so the width yeah. of the breakpoint itself mm -hmm. is like very big. Um, I think. Yeah, right. For now, of course, like we're just putting stuff onto the board. I might reevaluate the, the grid width and reduce it by a couple of columns. Mm -hmm. That way it looks more akin to 1440 or um, 1600, something like that. So let's just go with this. And here I would be putting what the final outcome is, right? So what happened? 
And what did I learn from this? So what are the takeaways? Because this is pretty important. This tells a lot of people, it tells people like, you learn from things. You talk about your mistakes. You talk about- Yeah, or like maybe you, you know, this was the first time that I encountered, you know, this specific scenario and, and how I kind of solve for it. Like if you're working with a very specific client problem that you, and you're like, this is how I did it. Like if you were, you, this would be a place where you could talk about how you set up those forms, right? All exactly. Those different form states. All those different form states. What didn't you consider like you're saying, and now you've learned from this and taking it to your next experiences. Like, oh, that's right. I worked on this for this client. I had to solve these issues. This was very hard, but we found a way to do, and now I know how to do that. Next time I get approached for that particular thing. What, I don't know, they can talk about it, but is there any particular uh, problem you've ever run into that was like, okay, how do I solve this? And yeah, like, do you have a particular difficult problem you ever run into? Me? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, um... A big hurdle that we that I come up against a lot is, you know, I work at an agency and so time and like budget and like timelines are tight, budgets are small. And the the big thing is just like balancing technical problems that need to be solved with design problems, and like working with. So I just we frequently encounter like a client has a very specific technical need. And how do we solve that from both a development standpoint and a design standpoint to make sure that like we're not making more work for either kind of party? Those are kind of like probably the biggest challenges that I face regularly, I would say. Uh, what about you? Uh, um, probably accessibility stuff. Yeah, that too. Yeah. for me. Um, not always the most perceptive initially, at least in the very beginning, I just, I just didn't, um, always account for that because I think I always worked for smaller companies for the most part. Um, so accessibility is always a big one and getting other people to think about it sometimes is also kind of a challenge unless yeah, you know, right. start getting into the weeds of it. There's also like a whole client education side of it. Like, how do you put, you know, you have to help them. They're putting their, you know, they're putting in their own content. Like, how do you, helping them with alt text and making sure that they understand uh, the, you know, color contract. You know what I mean? Like, all kind, they're eventually, you have to kind of do a little education on your side to help them understand. How do you go about that? Like, how do you go about, I don't want to say, you know, forcing them to do it, but like educating them. Yeah. I mean, uh, fortunately these days, most of our clients come to us wanting that already. Like they're already thinking that they, you know, that they want their site to be, to meet some kind of like accessibility compliance. So really it's the same as, you know, when we're throughout the whole process, right? Like throughout the whole process, we're talking about like, all right, you know, um, these are the design decisions that are being made and this is why. Um, so I think that like by the time that we get to that point where like we're ready for handoff in some capacity, like they've already been involved in all those decisions and so they kind of already understand. There's like a mm -hmm. level of understanding already, especially when they you get into like putting in the content for their site, like they doing it with them, I feel like results in like they understand it. Does that make sense? I don't know if it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it completely makes sense because telling them something is one thing, but right. showing them and saying like, okay, this is what we're talking about as when we first spoke about it, like going through these screens and going through the work like, okay, this is what we mean. Right. I think probably helps a lot. It's a, I feel like design is a, is a show, don't, show don't tell kind of thing, like movie. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to go into a movie with a ton of exposition because you're supposed to see it. 
All right, Alex, we are coming up to oh, no. our okay. last couple of minutes. So maybe give an overview of what we went over today. Let everybody know where they can find you and, and find this project potentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, so overview is we did a client, I'm sorry, a case study on a binge it movie series tracking app they can share with friends and family. Uh, I did this work on the previous Adobe Live. So if you want to go check that out, you can go and see that. And you can see this new case study on my site, uh, which is alejandroaguilarux.com. And you can check me out on different Twitter, on Twitter, AJ Aguilar, uh, 89, um, Instagram, and Behance. This will also be on my Behance profile as well. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So everybody go and follow Alex so you can check out this project. It goes live. Cool. Thanks. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody in the chat. Thanks for hanging out. And thanks, Alex, for sharing your insights and your process with us. It was so great to chat with you today and see this whole thing come to life. Um, we've got a full day ahead of us today. Stick around for the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Andrew Hawkreddle, followed by a new episode of How To with Claudie from Print My Soul. Claudie is also going over creating portfolio projects. And a new episode of Let's InDesign uh, with Annika Agarwal uh, after that. So thanks, everybody. Bye.